Hi, I'm Ed Hitchcock, the owner of Taylor Tackle, and today we are targeting really big rainbows. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you through the techniques and the tactics that me and my team are using to catch really big rainbows. And so this show's not going to have a ton of catches, but we've already gotten three on the books today, and they've all been trophy size in our books. Um, and so, yeah. I'm going to show you guys exactly what we're using in terms of lures and bait, the tactics in terms of how we're uh, spreading out, uh, moving around, things like that, and what type of rigs we're setting up. Um, I'm going to show you guys some of the jigging techniques that I'm using, and then we're going to get you some fish catches too. So hopefully everything I give you here today will allow you to get out there and catch some big rainbows. Oh, 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 I told you there were big bows in here. I told you there were big bows. My goodness, dude. Wow. Look at that fish. Oh, look at how chunky he is. That is like the healthiest fish I've seen in a long time. Dude, oh my God. I'm gonna talk a little bit about finding a big rainbow spot to fish. So I'm gonna walk you through the mapping in a little bit, but you know, really the biggest challenge is finding an ice fishery that sports bigger bows. And my biggest advice is going to be get off of the beaten path because there are tons of lakes in the West. I'm assuming you're gonna be in the West if you're fishing for bows underneath the ice. There's tons of lakes that freeze over, you know, an hour or two, uh, away from big population centers and those get stocked a lot with eater trout but any of them that are going to get bigger they're going to get harvested out of there very early and so it's going to be really tough to get big bows in locations that are closer to population centers and so we've done our best to get big bows around five to six hours away from you know wherever we're living we're in seattle right um and so that step number one is, you know, find a place that's going to sport big bows farther away. Uh, the second thing is I really like more prairie lakes. I don't like alpine lakes for big bows. I think that you can catch a bunch of eaters in alpine lakes. Um, and I know that those are usually the most common ice fisheries in the West because they ice over uh, at those higher elevations. But if you can find those lakes on the sides of mountain ranges, which are more in the plains at the, at the end of the range, typically like in the foothills to the plains, those are going to sport bigger bows on average because it's more nutrient rich. They're not um, as common to get freeze kill. Um, and just generally the nutrients are typically better. This is just an observation from myself. I'm sure a lot of other people have a different idea. Go for it in the comments. Um, but we have caught bigger bows outside of the mountains, but typically adjacent to the mountains, right? And so my last one is gonna be find and scout bodies of water that hold freshwater shrimp. Um, that food source is making a huge impact on the size of the trout. They can grow way faster and get way bigger than the typical natural food source, especially in those alpine lakes. There's just not a lot going on down there for them to feed on and get big. So those are my three things, really. Uh, getting away from the city, finding a plain slash foothill lake that freezes over with bows, and finding that lake that sports a huge, dense food source of freshwater shrimp.
hand this off to Nate. Oh, never mind. Oh, <laughs> oh you guys. Oh, look at that rainbow. Oh, man. That is such a healthy fish. Oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness. Here are my two go-to trout baits, and when I'm targeting bigger bows, this is my main my main lure. And I like to tip them um with worm when I'm going for bigger trout because it's a bit of a bigger profile and it's stinkier and you can really like flow the tail out. You'll see me fishing waxies a lot when I'm going for quantity of trout, but if I really want to dial into the bigger ones, I'm using bits of worm. And so you would typically see me on a show like this use this um, uh, spoon that's got a snap on here and it's going to flutter in the water and reflect light. Now, if the temps are around I don't know, 15 to 30 degrees out, this is your go-to. We have a huge cold front that came in last night, and I mean, we started the day at negative 9, and in Washington State, that is not very common. And so the trout will become more lethargic when a big cold front comes in, so I'm actually using my quantity trout lure, and that's a soft plastic on this jig head, and both of these are in our Taylor Tackle Kit. Um, and you'll see me use this a lot when I'm doing multi-species and just trying to catch a bunch of trout. Um, but right now we've been calling in a bunch of bigger ones with this and it's just too big for them. It's too cold. They're conserving a lot of energy and they're not hitting it. And so the last three that we've got have all been on our typical quantity trout jig and lure. You guys are seeing that I'm shooting a lot of the advice stuff in the shelter and that's because we're fishing on a really small body of water right now and if you have a small body of water that sports really big bows you're going to want to keep that on the down low because a lot of folks um, will just come in and just totally over harvest it and so I'm just picking a random bo bigger body of water that I haven't fished that sports some of the same things that I see on this lake in our smaller body of water. Um, and it's just a random lake in Montana, but it's going to show you exactly kind of like what I'm looking at here um, and how I'm picking things. And so regardless of it's a big or small body of water, I really like shallow for bigger bows. And so it's kind of counterintuitive. You'd think that they'd be deeper, but they really like to cruise around a lot. And I like to find choke points, which are somewhere between like six to 10 foot flats. Um, that choke around areas like inlets and islands and bays where bigger trout use them kind of as a highway navigation system to get through. And I like these uh, shallower areas because you can work your jig through the whole water column and really catch their attention. So where we're basically set up, it's almost identical to this, um, is a seven to, you know, six to seven foot flat. Um, it can get a little bit deeper. Uh, we'll maybe move over out over to 10 and 11, um, but it's right in between two islands and it connects two really large bays. So this is gonna be a high traffic area for big rainbows. What you're really looking for is waters. Oh, I don't know why I'm fucking up. I never fuck up anymore. I just like, I just like go out. Yeah, I think it's having an audience. I think it's having an audience. I think it's as big as the last one, but it's definitely still a big fish. Gosh, dude. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> big trout only. Oh, We're only catching big trout today. Wow. Look at that thing. Good one. I'm gonna get it back in real quick. <laughs> Still a lot of zest in that one. <laughs> Great fish. Okay, so when I'm jigging for bigger trout, I'm typically in shallower water like we talked about. I'm in that kind of seven to 10 foot range. And so 
I can cover the water column pretty easily without doing huge jigs. And that actually goes to my benefit because a lot of times the bigger trout, while they can be just as aggressive as the smaller ones, they don't tend to dart up as quick. And so, you know, under that 15 inch range, typically you get a trout that comes in, you got two to three feet separation, they just charge on up. Whereas these bigger ones, they come in, they're big red blobs on your flasher and they just don't charge as quick. So I'm not trying to be as aggressive with my jigging techniques. Um, so I'm maybe lifting it like two to three feet tops, typically more like two, letting it come back down. And a lot of times I'm jiggling it up like this and I'm doing it like this and I'm working it up and then working it back down like that. Um, that's caught two trout today between me and Cam because that's how the freshwater shrimp are moving in the water. Um, so that cadence is something these bigger trout are used to. Um, and we know this because we, you know, we put up the camera underwater and we can see how the shrimp are moving and they're just doing this. And then they're on their way down. So we're trying to mimic that. Um, and that's really sealed the deal. Then once they come in, I usually have a foot of separation on them. I'm raising it up, but I'm raising it up really slowly. And then I'm stopping. And so that's kind of what's been happening. If they come in and they miss, which the bigger ones typically don't, but they can. Um, if they miss and they turn around to come back, I'm kind of jiggling in place and that seemed to work and then pausing. Um, a lot of times I say, hey, keep your jigging cadence the same when they leave and they turn around. But these bigger ones are typically a little bit more slower and a little bit more subtle. Um, hopefully they're just as aggressive with a bite, but I would just scale everything back uh, in terms of trout jigging, just a little bit less aggressive. so cold out here. I mean, our drag is holding up, but any drag in this, these conditions are just... What test four. are you on again? Four. Oh my god. <laughs> You're gonna have to play them a little bit. Ed, tell us what you're doing right now. I'm trying to get my drag to work because it's frozen up. <laughs> and this is a big fish. Why is drag important for catching a fish? Because we've got this rainbow under here. We've got about five to six feet of water and the ice is a foot and a half. And so he's darting really hard left and right underneath the ice, which means when he pushes real hard, your line is just chafing at the bottom of the hole. And so if it gets caught on a groove, like you have a real good shot. Like that's really how you're gonna lose trout. And so you really wanna be careful because they get crazy up at the hole. It's not even there, I can't even see. And you also wanna tucker them out so that your jig doesn't get caught on the ice underneath the hole. Oh, this is bigger than the last? This is bigger than the last. Mittens are not good for filming. No. That line's making me so nervous. I know, but... <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's like, no. Nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is one of the tallest trout that I've ever seen. Watch that one. Oh my gosh. Look at how fat that trout is. That's the fattest trout I've ever caught. Oh my goodness. Look at that fish. <laughs> that was crazy. Let me take this out real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that thing's huge. Look how shiny it is. Are you still filming? Yeah. This is what we're doing. We're going for big bows like this. It's okay, I'll do it. I'll do it in a sec. But man, that is a nice bow. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a feeling that might be a triploid strain because it's so tall. Yeah. And they do stock triploids out here where we are, which we will not be sharing where we are. However, look at just like the belly. Look at how tall he is. Yeah. Can't even get your whole hand around him. Oh. Sharing his wealth with you. Oh, geez. That's a big fish. We're gonna take some pictures and then let her go.